you look back you've not had anything substantive in your own name it's been a year it's been two years what have you done what can you point your hands to if you reach out to me and then there's the, the money is not in my account i don't feel guilty not giving it to you because i don't have it it's somewhere doing something else marriages abroad or relationships abroad are not the same as marriages back home i think people still need to understand that children born in the uk are not british there are people who will give you terrible advice. No two ways about very, that. Very, very terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, terrible, very, terrible. very, very ter terrible yeah. advice. And I, I think that is stemmed from their personal experience. Yeah. Yeah. But people tend to want to impose their experience on other people. Mm -hmm. um, maybe go for a woman that wants you as much as you want them. Hello guys, welcome to yet another exciting episode on your favorite podcast in the whole wide world. We have Ohineba, myself and Francis and we're going to get straight into it. If this is the first time you're watching us, please do well to subscribe, tell someone about FNF and if you're a returning subscriber, we are super grateful to have you. Third year in the UK. Yeah. Third year in the UK. Yeah. Any lessons? I'll start oh, with you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I think uh, when we're coming on the train to see Ohineba, I was telling you that from from our backgrounds, right, when you you grew up in with a lot of struggle, sometimes yeah. when you get here, you are tempted to get comfortable. Sometimes yeah. you might not want to push further. further. You don't know that there's still opportunity, especially finance. You think that, oh, when I get maybe two thousand pounds and i'm able to save thousand pounds plus okay. or minus how much is it in ghana you see and you grow up we, we've had people who are here they've stayed here for 15 years mm -hmm. and they couldn't make, make anything a, substantial a lot of impact out of uh, their, their life here. in the uk so i think with my three years i think that i would have been able to manage my finances, finances better better if I knew some some things earlier, that's true. Yeah, and then also um, the lessons I've learned is with regards to relationship. I feel that there are some people that I didn't connect with them on the regular, yeah. and people that I had back home. Some relationships have that been destroyed. Okay. Yeah, and I think I could have managed them better. Yeah. Okay, um, I'll probably talk about something that we all know. What people say that black tax system where people yeah. want to bill you from back home <laughs> yeah um i i sort of probably learned it too late and when i realized that charlie you can't save everyone you can't save the world no. so as much as possible try to make sure your life is doing you fine before you try to do some of these things because when i came to the uk fresh i used to like for that christmas like <laughs> <laughs> And it's not like I don't do it now. I do, but at this time, it's more planned. Yeah. So like I have a system in place where once my 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 any money hits my account, there's a some pet that goes somewhere. Yeah. Mm. I have um I have some accounts that like sometimes weekly the deductions and all of that. So if you if you reach out to me and then there's the the money is not in my account. I don't feel guilty not giving it to you because I don't have it. Yeah. It's somewhere doing something else. Yeah. Okay. But in the early days, all the money comes into your account. You see it. Somebody's just asking for 200 cities, 300 cities. But sometimes what the person needs that money for, it's not something they cannot live without. Yes. Yes. And so we come to generals and then before you know it, you look back, you've not had anything substantive in your own name. Mm -hmm. It's been a year. It's been two years. What have you done? Yeah. What can you point your hands to? So yes, you said you're saving 500 pounds, 1,000 pounds a month. What have you been able to do with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so those are the things that had to take me a while to realize and then begin to shape my life in that regard. Yeah, so if I had to change anything, I'll be more strategic and then maybe remember that before I dish out any money out to anywhere, either, even not just going out, even for anything that was not very, very relevant, I ask myself, can I do something better? Yeah. Or would, I, would the person or would I survive without it? If yes, I'll move on with it. Yeah, and, and I think for me it will be connections and the sense of community. Okay, mm. the earlier you realize that you need that, the, the better. better for you. Yeah, because you are in a place where people have already been. Mm -hmm. 
and you definitely need someone to guide you on you know very, where very, to very. pass there are people who will give you terrible advice no two ways about very, that. very very terrible. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very terrible very terrible very ter- terrible advice. yeah and i th- i think that is stemmed from their personal experience yeah. yeah but people tend to want to impose their experience on other people yeah. the fact that you struggle this way doesn't mean this everyone's gonna going struggle, to struggle yeah this way. regardless you still need that sense of community because if i remember when i came immediately i came in a week after my dad died oh my gosh. so if if i didn't have these guys around it was I just going to be me and mean, probably yeah. would have been drowned so, yeah. Yeah. in depression or whatever wow. it is. so yeah that 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 is one thing for me that if i had learned it earlier probably would have helped i think to add to what you said i think most of the people that give out those kind of advice you see maybe until very recently most of the people that had come into the uk were not professional they came just come to hustle yeah, yeah. so they're doing any job but we have coming in as professionals to into another country absolutely we have a different way we can do our stuff yeah because they had to struggle their way in yeah, right from the beginning yeah, and yeah. All that. but you have a job right from the time you come in mm. so you should be able to pick up you can't pick up the same lessons from yeah, a hustler yeah. so we need to be able to connect with other professionals Absolutely. that have traveled in maybe not from ghana but other places how do they navigate mm-hmm. and i recently spoke to a care home manager and Oh, we talk about this. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. that man is Indian. But I just went. I asked him, "Do you own this place?" Said, yes. That was that's actually my first home I bought in the UK. Don't try. And then I looked at him and he said, "Said wow, I'm curious. I want to have a conversation." He says, "Are you sure you want to?" Have? I said, "Yes." He took me to his office. That was my first meeting with this man. I went to came to see someone. He took me to his office, and the next thirty minutes, we're talking about how he did it and he wasn't even a nurse back home he came to become a nurse in the uk it was his wife who was a nurse and brought him <laughs> and after he became a nurse in two years they got a home and then they've been managing the home since then wow oh, okay home manager that's, yeah that's outstanding oh, man. yeah yeah and, it's... and for me i don't leave those places like that before i left it i made sure i had a connection so <laughs> he i sort of got a, 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 so that if there's anybody got, who wants a job with them i told them yeah I'm going to do that for him so no worries so yeah, yeah. I, I always want to establish Great. connections you never know who is going to be the next person taking you to your next big dream yeah yeah, yeah and that that is that is a reason why i'm quite particular about this whole issue of you know connecting and yeah, keeping very community important. and yeah. all of that one thing i've noticed about people and i don't know if it's an african problem it's also a human problem is that there's always that they feel like okay i probably came before you yeah or something like that so I expect to be doing better than you. Yeah. I can't take yeah. advice from you or stuff like that. People have been here for X number of years and they are in a certain state. Someone has been here for six months. It's that, better. That person is, do you get it? Yeah. You should be willing to learn from mm-hmm. other people. You should be willing to get inspiration from other people. You're not in a competition with anyone. I have a junior college that I actually prepared for Oski. Toss is Oski. And then if I want to talk about investment, he's the one I'm going to. Yeah. yeah. He's been here for six months. But probably less oh i think almost a year now when they got in uh, in my whatsapp group i noticed that getting to even band six rules and other things were difficult and i i sort of put up the challenge to myself so I, when i got i told people don't sit down go for it and trust you very recently i got somebody who contacted me oh, never, i want to go for a senior role i said what was it he was going to have a band seven role he told me is it possible i said don't tell me it's not possible once you've applied for it and they've called you for the interview you qualify mm-hmm. so i told him what to do what tips and other things other people you could speak to and guess what he moved from band five to band seven straight wow yes yeah straight. and it's not even within his trust he went to another trust to get a band seven role from band five don't straight. try and he's only got less than two years experience in the uk wow great yeah yeah wonderful yeah so let's let's talk about relationships relationship marriage uh in the uk how how is it how okay so for me i i I met my wife before i came to the uk we we knew ourselves back home and then we we came in so i came in and then later she joined we were we were both um slow with this uk process but the moment i moved she knew it was time for her to move also so she also moved and joined me so i think i think we took like four months and then she was also here and um we got married the same year she came she came in january by september we were married and then we've had a a baby now yeah um so relationships in the uk one thing we should note is it's never the same as 
marriages abroad or relationships abroad are not the same as marriages back home. Because sometimes of the support and other things that we have back home. Yeah. Things are different. Even the roles begin to change. Yeah. Because even though to, when two professionals are married back home, some of the expectations are different. There's a lot of things that man still has to do and all of that. One of the things I would say is when people come together, whether the person you're meeting is from back home or you met the person here, people should have a communication about what they expect of each other. Yeah. When it comes to um, keeping your home yeah yes and i think one of the things also is mindset mm-hmm. for me before i got married one of the things i told myself it's it's i'm going to make it work yeah you see we hear stories about people coming to the uk their marriages break down and i came from a place where i had evidence of that a proof of that mm. most of my uncles that had come in here had, had struggles with their marriages yeah but I told myself, there are other people that have come in that has worked. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes if you let the negative stories get into your head, you step, you put your step, your, your foot in, uh, one step ahead yeah. and you're looking back. What if it doesn't work? Yeah. Yeah. But what if it works? Yeah. Marriage is work. It's a lot of hard work. You must put in the effort and the two of you must be willing to make it work. Mm-hmm. Has it been all smooth? No. Sometimes I think I'm, I'm even trouble for my wife. Like... I think she's she she's she really she's handling things better she's than that, yeah. So the women are yeah. very good at some of these <laughs> and, things. And, seriously. and that is this is my personal advice um, for young people, especially the young men, especially in the diaspora. Um, maybe go for a woman that wants you as much as you want them, because especially if she says somebody you have chased back home, you have been chasing for years, and you bring them in. That's and tight that sense of being chased, wanting to be chased is still there. Yeah. So it's like when you stop doing the thing that you used to do for them when you're in a relationship, it they begin to have like there's a struggle in your marriage. Yeah. Like, yeah. But if the person wants you as much, they also want to put in the effort, like reciprocate yeah. whatever you do so that it makes it work. Because trust me, um my wife she has moved to like before like my last birthday, she was like, Oh, I'll book uh, um before I knew it, she had arranged for, she had booked, booked things I had to go for, mm-hmm. a holiday and all of that. Um, she was yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this guy. Yeah, is so wife. that's the thing. She's good. Like, even before he came to the UK, the, the lady is good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so treatments, then things. Yeah, so you see, and then even when she's, I came in, she good. didn't stop that. She, once, once I get home, get home tired and all of that. Maybe I've not been able to keep up and all of that. Maybe, but we all have our strength in our various ways. Yeah. Yes, but I always say that if the woman wants you as much as you want them, usually it makes it, things work. Yeah. yeah, that's one thing I would say about marriages. Don't just go for somebody you say. It's a different environment. If you're back home, it probably will be different. The expectations are different. Yeah. When you are here and you are both supposed to work, what, what, what's the best, what should, how should each of you contribute to make the house work? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a fair understanding of this before you get into the marriage, you get in there and you ask, why, what are you doing with your money? Why are you not supporting? Yeah. But did you have a conversation before then? Did you tell, did you have an agreement as to how much you want her to bring into the house? Yeah. Do you get it? Otherwise, there'll be a lot of conflict when it comes to money. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you, you've made a very good point with the fact that the roles can interchange. Yeah. You yeah. see, you shouldn't assume a role that because I'm a man, man yeah. I'm the one supposed to provide, I'm supposed to do this, I'm supposed to do that. There are people like Nessu who have come in and brought their husbands. Yeah. There, there are some husbands who have been unemployed yeah. for months. months. Yeah. And their wives are literally the breadwinners yeah. now. Would you then say that I'm the man? So no. Yeah, but then the, the struggle is some men come in like that and then they're trying to do everything to sort of beat the woman at that game. Like to get a job that ends more. Exactly. That mentality, those things don't work. It, because it then work you're putting a lot of pressure on you. I met a colleague at work who was... I would say probably overworking, but still working every day because he was doing an HCA job and the wife is a nurse. How much does an HCA get? He wants to probably to show up as the man of the house. But if there's been a proper conversation in the house, she understands you have to make some sacrifices back home. Yeah. Because he was doing some very good job before he came here. Mm-hmm. And it got to a point you realize that he's got regrets. Yeah. He wished he was still back home because he feels that the woman is probably showing off or demonstrating an attitude like, um, I earn more. But maybe if there was a clear conversation before you yeah. decide to get on the plane to come here to say that I'm coming to start afresh. I'm not in a competition with you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't intend to do better than you do. 
let's see how we can both contribute yeah. to make it yeah. work it will work but i think sometimes that's I don't know what that's called. It's alpha male yeah. thing you know, that is among it's, African it's, it's men. A, it's a big problem. Yeah. It's something I was going to talk about. Like there are so many quote unquote motivational speakers and there's alpha male speakers and all that. And not every advice will be relevant to, to everyone. everyone. Yeah. And then the culture here is different from the back culture home. we have back home. The way we're brought up. You know, no matter how many years you stay overseas, you still got that home feel that yeah. african training is it, yeah. still it's still in you so we don't have to um always and and back home the man wants to be a man yeah but when when you come here too there are things that you, you see that it doesn't work it doesn't work yeah, my my you, wife you, you, your, 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 your 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 salary may not be able to provide for everything in the house exactly yeah your but, salary might be rent yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if if you both at the point Puts it things together to, if you understand each other and you have a it should be, be from the beginning com- communication yeah i don't want people get into marriage before they have that conversation yeah, yeah. it's going to be horrible yeah have yeah. the conversation before tell you ask yourselves what what each person will, will bring in terms of how to manage your home yeah, yeah. so that you know that why are you buying this you don't you're not supposed to be buying it yeah i'm not going to ask my question why, why are you buying this because if she's contributing her quota to manage the house, everything else should be for her to be able to live the kind of life that she wants to be able to afford. Yeah. So otherwise, you get angry for the slightest things. Yeah. Where is the light still on? And to put it on because of bills. Yeah. But if you know that you you know at the end of the day you're still able to manage your bills and everything within a reasonable amount, so you don't have to be. Yeah. Would, yeah. You, would you Would you guys be shocked if I told you that? And I know some women in this country who have come from wherever we've come from and are still holding on to the opinion that a woman's money is their money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The man has to provide everything. I had a recent clubhouse hearing, conversation hearing and one person story. told me that wow. he, she's not going to settle for a man who says 50-50 because there's nothing like 50-50. She needs to... It's not like she doesn't want to contribute, but don't make it a rule that it's 50-50. I personally don't really satisfy to that 50-50 thing, but... It's about that's what I'm saying. Have the conversation before. You need to have an agreement as to how much you wanted to bring in. Then you can have a certain mm-hmm. form of um, a, a basis. But yes, some people still have that. Like, I need to be creative. I, my husband needs to t- t- take care of me. Yeah. But the thing is, your husband is probably a band five nurse. You are a band five nurse. You're earning the same amount. Are you a how can I? Level? How can I take care of you? And then, and then the home. Of, yeah. Exactly. It, does, it doesn't even you make know, sense. I, I think every... So my wife and I, we've got our own family goals. Yeah. Like the way we handle our money. That yeah. works for us. Yeah. yeah. Right? It might not work yeah. for everyone. Yeah, it might not work for everyone, but it works for us because we, we've got a plan. Like in the next five years, what, what do we want, want to do? Good. Okay. So how are we managing our money now so we'll be able to get to get that to target? Things. Right? Because... Personally, I, I believe that it has to come to a point where I can allow my wife to rest. Mm-hmm. What yeah. investments are we making into that future to be able to make sure that then when we are resting, I it wouldn't also be overworking. overworking. Yeah. We can both go for a vacation for two months and we wouldn't think about salary. salary yeah. So what are we doing now? We oh. have to make sacrifices now. Yep. And she understands because we've, we've had that uh, conversation. conversation we're talking about. We've had for years, even before we were married. Mm. And when we're dating, even when we're friends, we used to talk about these things. So, so uh, we buy, <laughs> so <clears throat> we buy into each other's vision, yeah. right? We know where we want to go, and we know how we'll get there. There will be struggles. You of won't course. always agree, yeah. but you know yourselves. You know how to solve those issues, and you, you know how to get there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that that flexibility for me is it's very not necessary. Important. Something that has to be discussed like you guys already mentioned before the marriage and that whole idea of trying to be the man trying to take everything everything you, you can't die before you would die, die before your and time bury you I'll and she'll get married again exactly she'll get married <laughs> again probably to fifi <laughs> <laughs> all right okay yeah 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 so um so you you have got a kid francis yeah. isn't yet i don't know what he's waiting for so Please. <laughs> you're not even married. He's waiting. For, he's so, waiting for the positions. We'll yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, that later. Yes. <laughs> so All right. t- tell us about raising kids in in the UK. Okay. Um. So you hear a lot of people say raising kids is expensive and all of that, but I really like we we've all agreed to. 
it all depends on how everything has was planned from the beginning yeah. maybe i've been fortunate because um just when our baby came in my wife stayed in like after the maternity leave my uh, my, my siblings got in here so they were support my sister was supporting it a little with that but one of the key things i want to mention is the mindset that people probably don't have about the uk when it comes about when it comes to children born in the uk i think people still need to understand that children born in the uk are not british mm-hmm. or they are not citizens of this country mm-hmm. because people come in and they want to get pregnant and they want to come in because they want to come in here and they don't have benefits they are not going to have benefits mm. and i've had to have conversations with people that had come in their first few months gone home to get married or probably bring their partners in here one of the things i w- i really tell people now is don't be in a hurry to have a child yeah it can be a huge struggle yep um when my wife came in fortunately maybe she had worked for a while so she was entitled to other things but at the time she had changed jobs before when she was still pregnant she changed jobs and because of that she was not entitled to this maternity pay and other things so just some enhancement and she had to stay home for almost a year i think even more than a year yeah to m- take care mm-hmm. of the baby and all of that so imagine if your husband is not a professional or is not doing any job that can get him some good money mm-hmm. then it means that that one year or that six months or that nine months you, sh- you are going to be home it's going to be a real struggle for your family yeah so you, you need to make sure that yes i know childbirth is especially for women there's a timeline and all of that so if you want to make sure that your wife she's probably getting old you want to have babies what have you the man put in place yeah to make sure that if anything she needs to come home and there's no extra funds coming in how do you get the money you need to keep your house going yeah. and still be able to th- to be there physically to support yeah and that is where men here in this country or the african men should notice that raising kids in this country or overseas is not just a woman's job you should be willing to take up the baby yeah you rather stay in all, all night for your wife to have some sleep so you can it's not easy yeah. <laughs> it's not easy uh, with emphasis yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not easy <laughs> and for me one of the things was it got to a point where i was like oh this like this one is only the baby i had that strong bond with my daughter like that was that like i, I actually want her on me when I, she's going to sleep and all of that and trying to get uh, that connection yes it was one of the reasons why i actually changed my job because i wanted to be able to get to see her for her to see me before i leave the house and by the time i come back she's not sleeping yeah because i can't go to work at 7:30 when she's probably asleep i come home late 8 p.m she's already sleeping and that connection is missed so i had to find a flexible something so it may that might not be able to work for you but you should be able to make time yeah. you can't have a baby and not um doing a lot of other mm. shape that is not making time for your family mm. the other thing also has to do with um the, the child stay the dependency and all of that because i had an issue where <laughs> i had to I, I like to drag things that i i think i'm right about where my daughter was admitted for one day in my hospital and i was given a bill wow yes and i was like why am i having a bill because my daughter is supposed to be entitled to nhs care because yeah. i am exempted from paying yeah. health charge but apparently because she needs to have a visa of her own oh yeah before she's entitled otherwise she's only entitled for three months and you have to pay bills wow so you can actually assess emergency care but any care for admission you need to pay for it wow wow so these are things that people don't know <laughs> and we think that oh i'm going to have my child oh i'm not going to get a Ghanaian passport and all of that because i want the child to be british so i want to stay on those um, i get my indefinite and i'll apply for a british passport for her and all of that but those were the things if you don't make sure so i think in the first three months the child is entitled to get a lot of other things but after the three months they can't assess some things mm-hmm. so those are the things we need to understand that you may have to get a, a passport of your home country for the child and you need to get brp and all of that mm-hmm. otherwise you any to any misfortune happen it's going to be a lot of and it, we the chat my baby was just there for one day and i'll tell you that i had to pay over almost two thousand pounds wow 
almost i think it was one seven something <laughs> one day one night then nhs is good <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah was nhs mm. yeah was it a private care nhs care i mean like yeah the, what the free the yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's good yeah because yeah. if people are paying forty thousand dollars for yeah for maternity in in the US imagine yeah you having to pay for it and what was wrong she just wasn't feeding well and we took her there and they wanted her to see if she could feed at night so that's why she spent the night okay yeah and that was why we had to pay that money that's good it's good you so, have to make that sacrifice for yeah. us to learn yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i remember i had to write to the overseas team and then tell them that try to get um, information from the um um home office website and other things and the funny thing is the information there it's not very clear yeah yeah, yeah it's exactly. a bit dicey i had to go to the nhs um, um child visa dependent policy thing before i could sort of understand mm-hmm. and then i had to decide to you know what let me just pay mm. yeah because it was uh, it was a lot of back and forth i really wasn't willing to pay because I was making the point that if I'm exempted and my child is my dependent, which you know, she has a birth certificate in mind, everything shows that she's my child. For them, you need to still prove that yeah. you have actually applied for the dependent visa and she has it. You know, I, I, so I'll say this, then we wrap up, right? Yeah. So I was listening to something on TikTok and they said a child was refused she was deported from the uk or yeah. something so she was, de- she was denied entry back she to the uk yeah. so she was born here i think i've seen that story she was born in the uk with and the parents went for a holiday and when they were coming back they said the child cannot come in because she doesn't have a prp she doesn't have a prp she needs a visa like yeah to yeah. come in as so, a dependent so, visa even though she was born here they know everything but yeah we, she yeah. doesn't have it to prove it yeah so talking about your daughter for instance yeah. you, so if you, you need had to apply apply for it oh wow get yeah. a passport get a brp, BRP yeah. That, yeah all of that all right um guys um wow. <laughs> we'll wrap up this conversation here yeah. uh thanks so much for joining uh staying with us to this point if it's your first time as we said kindly subscribe click the like button share and tell someone about fnf catch dialogues and until we meet in the next episode it's peace